Today is gonna be the first video that I do while standing, which makes me more agile and ready to punch Ooh. some analogies in the face. Um, yes, we're looking at an old cooler, and we're gonna see if it can actually cool an 8-core Ryzen CPU. Uh, I should actually find out, I should probably Google what that cooler is. The cooler that we're gonna be looking at today is the Cooler Master... I don't know, is that Gemini or is that Gemin 2? Are those Roman numerals? I don't really... No, I don't really get what's going on there, but, but anyway. Now physically, this is a fairly interesting looking cooler. It does have the fan facing straight down onto the motherboard as opposed to vertically up, blowing out of the case. This is obviously so that it is lower profile and can fit in more cases. Although bear in mind that it does limit your RAM compatibility quite a lot. So that means that the Dom Platts and the Tradizies of the world aren't gonna fit under the cooler. And even if you do have some, some sexy RAM, you're, you're not gonna be able to see it. Now the actual fan is 120 millimeters, but you can also fit a 140 millimeter fan on it for some reason. It doesn't really make sense to me because all of the extra bit of fan is blocked off by this metal shroud. As far as weight goes, the cooler weighs just over 600 grams, and it's actually a little bit lighter than a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition, which is a very good performing budget cooler. The weight combined with the fact that it has five heat pipes it's actually got me fairly hopeful that it's gonna perform pretty well. Now, as far as the mounting hardware goes, it's not amazing because you have to actually screw down the cooler from the back of the motherboard and it uses just normal screw nuts. So it's, yeah, if you don't have a proper tool, that makes it a bit uncomfortable. I actually ended up having to use uh, pliers to actually tighten it down and it just feels like you're gonna drop stuff. Now, because I got this cooler off of a used PC, I only have the AM3 mounting gear available for it. But luckily, I have an X370 Strix motherboard, which actually has mounting holes for both AM4 and AM3, which is a very useful feature. So I'm gonna be using that motherboard for today's video with a Ryzen 7 1700X that's been overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz, and it's gonna be running at about 1.4 volts. Now, a Ryzen 7, CPU at 1.4 volts is a pretty hefty load, so I'm curious to see if the cooler can handle it. And if it can't, I'm gonna swap out the fan to something a little bit more serious a little bit later. Now first off, let's have a look at the gaming results. Now, starting off with Escape from Tarkov, which essentially doesn't use your CPU at all, uh, the temperatures are already fairly worrying, considering that it's sitting at like 20% utilization and we're getting over 60 degrees Celsius, that's not looking good for the cooler in an open side paneled H500. It's, yeah, air airflow is not gonna be a huge issue for it here, uh, so that's not an excuse. Although, bear in mind, the ambient temperature was about 27 degrees Celsius. It's getting as hot as hell in my apartment here. Now, moving over to Battlefield 5, which is a game that I really like using to test systems with because it's very balanced. It uses the CPU quite a bit and it uses the GPU quite a bit. And as you can see, the temperatures are getting hotter. But 76 degrees is not that bad. I'd consider that a pass. It's not ideal, but yeah, considering the very high ambient temperature, it's, it's, it's semi-acceptable. So yeah, I guess it can handle it and the video ends right there, right? Although, if you put a very heavy load on the CPU, something like Ida64, the cooler just falls flat. After just about three minutes, the test actually just fails because the temperature gets to like 85.5 on the T-Dye temperature, which isn't that high, but still, it, it seems like the system doesn't like that at all. Now, after the cooler failed miserably at the gauntlet of Ida64, I decided to try out a more serious fan because the fan that comes with the cooler is very flimsy and it feels terrible. It's one of the worst feeling fans I've interacted with in a long time. So with that, let's try out the Noctua NFA-12, which is like the Henry Cavill of fans. If this cooler can't beat Ida64 with an NFA-12 on it, then there's no hope for it, unfortunately. Now let's start off again with Escape from Tarkov. The temperatures did drop a little bit, it's actually running better, and the NFA-12 is whisper quiet. I really love how quiet that fan is. Moving over to Battlefield 5, 
unfortunately things aren't looking significantly better here we were going from a temperature of about 77 degrees to about 74 with the noctua nfa 12 but bear in mind that the ambient temperature did creep up from 27 degrees to 29 degrees so if you do correct for ambient there is a little bit of a bigger difference but going into the ida 64 test i'm not a hundred percent confident that it's going to go very well it still failed very quickly I did think that maybe there was some other stability issues going on, but I had a look around, changed some settings, and I really couldn't get the PC to run IDA64 with the 1700X at 1.4 volts. Unfortunately, it's just too much for this little cooler to handle. So in conclusion, this eight-year-old cooler actually handled the 1700X a little bit better than I thought it would when it comes to gaming applications. Although, I do want to add that this cooler does come from that iBuy Power pre-built that I've been doing way too much content on. Um, but I am convinced that that entire PC is, is just cursed because I moved just the air cooler onto my test bed and all of a sudden my test bed just starts blue screening the whole time and there's all kinds of weird game crashes and stuff. I am convinced some weird demon lives in that system and a part of it is now in my test bed. I'm actually hoping that it doesn't infect all of the PCs in my house with whatever venereal disease it is that it has. <laughs> so with that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm actually going to try a bit of different content next week. I've been feeling a little bit like I've been stuck in a rut lately. So I'm going to try something new next week. Hopefully it, it goes okay and, and you guys enjoy it. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, bye-bye.